You've probably heard of the term supercurricular activities and you may or may not know what they are. In this video, I'm going to tell you how to optimize your medical school application by building up an impressive portfolio of supercurricular activities. Hey friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Rohan. I'm a third year medical student studying at Cambridge University. In this video, I'm going to give you a complete rundown on supercurricular activities, what they are and how they're different from extracurricular activities, why they're important and how you can use them to maximize your medical school application. And finally, I'll give you my list of suggestions for supercurricular activities. So let's define the term. I would define supercurricular activities as anything outside your school curriculum that directly relates to the chosen course that you want to study at university. These can be activities such as reading books, writing essays, attending lectures at different societies, and etc etc. We'll cover more later. This is distinct from extracurricular activities, which don't have to relate to your chosen course. However, extracurricular activities are still useful for developing soft skills and we might discuss this in a future video. Supercurricular activities are super important. Well, you, did you see why I did that? Like, super important? Well, they're important when you're applying to medical school because it shows that you have passion for the subject, that you're genuinely interested in medicine as a science. It also demonstrates that you have initiative in that you're organizing things off your own back. It can also help broaden your perspective as well as undoubtedly give you more resources for writing things about your personal statement and also discussing things in an interview. Supercurricular activities are super duper important if you're thinking about applying to Oxford or Cambridge because they explicitly say that they're looking out for this in their application and they're not too bothered about extracurricular things because they're more interested in your academic potential. With regards to tips on how to go about supercurricular activities and how to leverage them in your application, the first thing I'd say is to do things that you genuinely enjoy. Don't just do it as a tick box exercise. This will help you actually do more supercurricular activities and help you write about them in a more passionate and more meaningful way in your personal statement or when you're discussing it in an interview. I would recommend starting as early as you can. Ideally, you want to have done the bulk of this kind of stuff by the end of year 12 because the final year of school gets busy with like UCAT, BMAT and interviews and actually selling for your main A-levels. There are two strategies which you can go about in choosing topics to engage in for your supercurricular activities. You can either try link them all together. For example, I'm only going to focus on like heart related articles and go into a deep dive in something in cardiology. And you can try and link all of this together in a nice flowy way in your personal statement. Or you can try maximize the breadth and engage in a broad range of topics that interest you. There's no right or wrong way to go about things. Personally, I went for the latter option because I feel I have quite a few interests, even within medicine. If you do go for my strategy, be sure not to just list everything which you've done, but actually reflect on everything. And this can be done by keeping a small medicine reflection journal and jotting down a few thoughts about anything you've read or heard or seen relating to medicine. Don't just list things because they don't give a good impression either in your personal statement or in interviews. Another thing is to make sure that you gather evidence of everything that you've done. So collect any certificates from, I don't know, um, the maths Olympia that you do, or get your teacher to say in their reference that you gave a presentation at society, whatever is applicable to you. Okay, so now I'm going to give some suggestions for supercurricular activities that you could do to enhance your application and to explore the field of medicine. Remember that these are applicable to any course. Cambridge have their own list of things which you could do and I've linked that in the description box below alongside this video from St John's College Cambridge which give a deeper dive into supercurricular activities. I've also mentioned these things in my applying to medical school document which is also linked in the description box so you have plenty of resources to work through. My first suggestion is to read around the subject. So for example, you could read books relating to your subject. I won't touch too much on this because I have a separate video on this which you can check out somewhere over there in your spare time. One thing to note is you don't have to read books. I've left some suggestions in a reading list down below, but you can read online articles, for example, from BBC Health. You can read journal articles from like Biological Sciences Review or The New Scientist. I particularly like the Biological Sciences Review because it's written to be accessible to sixth form students. What I used to do is my school used to subscribe to this journal. So I used to go to the library and photocopy a few articles from an issue of the journal occasionally to take home and to read in my spare time. 
You don't even have to physically read something. Anything which widens your horizons about the subject counts as extra reading. So you can watch documentaries like the BBC Hospital series or the Junior Doctor series. There are also educational videos on YouTube which I've linked down below too. And all these things will give you a more rounded view about how, what studying medicine and actually being a doctor is like. I think podcasts are a really great and potentially underrated resource too. My absolute favourite one at the moment is the Huberman Lab podcast, which is a neuroscience podcast run by Andrew Huberman, who's a neurobiologist and ophthalmologist at Stanford University. He makes neuroscience really accessible, explaining complex neural circuits in a way that anyone can understand, even if you haven't studied neuroscience before. And yet he goes into great depth as well. He also gives really practical advice and protocols about living a healthier life and all of this is backed by quality, peer-reviewed data. My second suggestion is to do an extended project. I think this is a really high yield thing you can do because it shows that you have independent research skills and the ability to communicate your finding. And it's the closest level to university work which you're probably going to do in school. And at the end of it all, you also get a qualification. So I won't take too much more about it because I have a whole series of videos about the EPQ on my channel, which you can go check out. My third suggestion is to enter essay competitions I think this is another great thing to do because again it shows independent research skills. It's also good because Oxford and Cambridge for medicine, for the first three years, it's largely assessed by actually writing essays. You're typically writing two to three essays per week during term time. So if you can demonstrate that you have proficiency in this already, this could potentially boost your application. With regards to what competitions to enter, I would recommend trying to do external competitions rather than internal ones in your school because they're more prestigious and they're gonna be less biased. Ask your teachers at school to look out for them for you, or you can just do some Googling yourself and to see what's available. Many of the Oxford and Cambridge colleges run their own essay competitions for year 12 students. Don't worry about the result of the competition. You, by all means, you don't need to win. Although if you do, that's obviously an added bonus. The main thing to do is to reflect on what you learnt from the process of researching for and actually writing the essay. This can serve as a springboard for more research and other supercurricular activities. My fourth suggestion is to get involved in academic societies. For example, MedSoc or a biology society would be a great way to explore medicine outside the school curriculum. If there isn't one at your school, you could start one. This will look even more impressive when you write about it in your personal statement because it shows that you have that extra initiative. But if that's not possible, you could always look for academic societies outside of your school or even attend local lectures. I like societies because they also give you the opportunity to give talks, and this is a great way of kind of recycling stuff which you've already researched for your extended project or essay competitions or something kind of related to that. For example, I wrote an essay for Corpus Christi College Cambridge on phantom limb pain, and then later on that year I actually gave a very similar presentation in my biology society. Giving talks will improve your confidence ahead of interviews in vocalising your thoughts about scientific issues. Number five on the list is to enter Olympiads and other challenges. For example, the UK MT Maths Challenge or the Biology Olympiad, there's a Physics Olympiad, Chemistry Olympiad. These again show that you're willing to stretch yourself outside the comforts of your A-level or IB curriculum. They may also help you prepare for interviews because they help develop this lateral thinking or critical thinking. This is because the tests aren't designed to be a test of memory, but it's designed to be accessible for people doing different exam boards and to challenge even the top students in the country. So it's definitely worth doing some of these if you can, and there are past papers online which will give you a flavour about what they're like. Number six is to complete a MOOC, which stands for Massive Open Online Course. So this is a way of gaining further knowledge in a particular area or in a field that you're interested in. There are lots of websites which offer MOOCs. Some examples include Coursera or FutureLearn. Most of them are free, but some are paid. And sometimes they make you pay at the end if you want a certificate of completion, but don't bother about that. It's more important that, that you talk about what you've learned from the experience. In my humble opinion, I think MOOCs are kind of low impact. I did one on FutureLearn, but in general I feel they're very random, they're often not targeted at the right level, and sometimes they're from less reputable institutions. The only time I'd recommend doing a MOOC if there is a specific course which matches your personal area of interest, or something that will help you in the research for an essay or an EPQ for example. Don't just do them for the sake of doing them. And finally, go to courses or to conferences or summer schools. This is a suggestion which I picked up when I was doing the research for this video online. Personally, I think they're a bit overpriced, and if you live away from a big city like me, 
then there are probably fewer opportunities around. Sometimes they can be helpful for specific parts of the medicine application process. So for example, UCAT preparation or interview, mock interviews, but I won't say too much more about them now. So that brings us to the end of the video. Do remember to check out the description box below for all the links I said I put there. And if some of them aren't there, do leave me a comment. If you found this video useful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this in the future. You might also want to check out my other videos in the Applying to Medical School series for more detailed advice for things such as the personal statement, UCAT and BMAT advice, and for interview preparation. Anyway, take care and bye for now.